I mean, can I ask briefly, what were those early days of ARPANET and the internet like? What was, uh, what, I mean, did you, uh, again, sorry for the silly question, but uh, could you have possibly imagined that uh, the, the internet would look like what it is today? You know, some of it is remarkably unchanged. So, like, one of the things that I noticed really early on um, at, you know, when I was at, at, at Carnegie Mellon was that a lot of social life became centered around the ARPANET. Mm-hmm. So, things like, you know, between email and text messaging, uh, because, the, you know, text messaging was a part of the ARPANET really early on. There were no cell phones, but you know you're sitting at a terminal and you're typing stuff, and so essentially know. email or like what? What is well, just message? like like a one line message, right? So so so. Oh, cool! So like chat, like chat, yeah, right. Wow. So it's like like sending a, a one line message to somebody, right? Yeah. And 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 so pretty much everything from you know arranging lunch to going out on dates, you know, it was all like driven by social media. <laughs> social <you know>? media. <laughs> right? In the Early in the days, in, yeah. in the eighties. <laughs> Easier than phone calls, yeah. You know, and <laughs> my life had gotten to where, you know, I was, you know, living on social media, you know, from like the early mid eighties. Um and and so when when it sort of transformed into the internet and social media explodes, I was kind of like, "What's yeah. the big deal?" Yeah, <laughs> it's just a scale thing. It's it's, it's yeah. right. The, the the scale thing is just astonishing. Yeah, um, but the fundamentals, um, in some ways, the <laughs> fundamentals <laughs> have, have have hardly changed. <laughs> And you know the the technologies behind the the networking have changed significantly. The you know the 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 watershed moment of you know going from the ARPANET to the internet, um, and then people starting to just scale and scale and scale. I mean the 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 scaling that happened in the early nineties and. The way that so many vested interests fought the internet. Oh, who? Oh, interesting. What was the? Oh, because you can't really control the internet. So yeah. Who so, fought the internet? So, 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 so fundamentally, the you know the cable TV companies and wow. broadcasters and phone companies. Um. You know, at, at the deepest fibers of their being, they hated the internet. But it was often kind of a funny thing because, um, you know, so 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 think of a, a cable company, right? Most of the employees of a cable company, their job is getting. TV shows, movies, whatever, out to their customers. They view their business as serving their customers. Um, but as you climb up the hierarchy in the in the cable companies, that view shifts because um, really the business of the cable companies. Had had always been selling eyeballs to advertisers, right? Um, and you know that view of of like a cable company didn't really dawn on most people who worked at the cable companies. But you know, we you know I had various dust ups with various cable companies where you could see, you know, in the stratified layers of the corporation that, that this, 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 this view of, you know, the reason that you have, you know, cable TV is to capture eyeballs, you know, there. So they didn't see it that way. 
Well, so so the people who the most of the people who worked at the phone company or, or at the cable companies, their view was that their their job was getting delightful content out to their customers, and their customers would pay for them, would pay for that. Higher up, they viewed this as as a way of attracting eyeballs to them. And and then what they were really doing was selling the eyeballs that were glued to their content to the advertisers. To, to the advertisers, yeah. And, and so the internet was a competition in that sense. Right. And 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 well, and they were so, right. <laughs> well, yeah. Um I mean there there was one proposal that we sent the the, the, the we one detailed proposal that, that we um wrote up, you know, back at that Sun in the in the early nineties that was essentially like, look, anybody, you know, with with internet technologies, anybody can become provider of of content. So, you know, you could be distributing home movies to your parents or your cousins or your who are anywhere else right so anybody can become a publisher wow you were thinking about that already yeah Netflix. yeah that, that, that Netflix. was Netflix. <laughs> yeah that YouTube. was that, that that was like in the in the early 90s yeah and we thought this would be great you could you know and, and the kind of content we were thinking about at the time was like you know home movies kids essays um you know, stuff from like grocery stores or, you know, you know, that the, or a, or a restaurant yeah. that they could actually like start sending information about out. And, um, that's brilliant. And, and the, 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 the reaction of the cable companies was like, fuck no. Because, See, because yeah. then, we're out of business. What is it about companies that, because they could have just, they could have been ahead of that wave. They could have listened to that and they could have. They, they didn't see a path to revenue. You know, there's, there's, there's right. somewhere in there, there's a lesson for like big companies, right? Like to, to listen, to, to try to anticipate the, the renegade, the out there, out of the box people like yourself in the early days writing proposals about what this could possibly be. Well, and that, you know, the, you know, it wasn't, you know, if you're in a, in a position where you're making truckloads of money off of a particular business model, um, you, you know, the, 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 the whole um, thought of like, you know, leaping the chasm, Right, you know, you know, you can see. Oh, new models that are more effective are emerging. Right, so like digital cameras versus film cameras. Um, you know, I mean, the, why you know, take the leap? Why, why take the leap? Because you're making so much money off of film, and um, you, you know, in my past at Sun. One of our big customers was Kodak, and I ended up interacting with folks from Kodak quite a lot. And they actually had a big um, digital camera research and you know digital imaging business or b b development group, and they knew that that you know you, you you know you just look at the at the trend lines and you look at. Um, you know the emerging quality of 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 these you know digital cameras, and you know you can just plot, plot it on a graph, you know, and it's like, you know, sure, film is better today, but you know, digital is 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 improving like this. The lines are going to cross and. And you know, at the point at which the lines cross is going to be a collapse in their business, and they could see that, right? They absolutely knew that. The problem is that you know, up to the point where they hit the wall, they were making truckloads of money, yeah. 
right? And when they did the math, um, it never started to make sense for them to kind of lead the charge. Mm-hmm. And part of the issues for a lot of companies for this kind of stuff is that, um, you know, if you're going to leap over a chasm like that, like like with Kodak going from from film to digital, that's a transition that's going to take a while, right? We had we had fights like this with people over like smart cards. The smart cards fights were just ludicrous. 